So I'd, I'd like to, you know, check in. I'd like to have everybody uh, check in, you know, introduce yourself a little bit. Um, you can say anything you want. Um, you can say how, you know, how you're doing with the lockdown, or you can say anything about your professional situation, or you can, or you can talk about what you're hoping to get uh, from this session. That would be great for me. I love to uh, get, find that out as soon as possible what people are hoping for uh, from the session, um, because that way, uh, you know, so it, 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 it's for a teacher, I know Wesley's also a teacher, for a teacher, the, the, it's the awfulest feeling in the world to get excited about an idea that you think everybody needs to know about and to talk and talk about it for, for quite a while and then find out it's, it's something that people aren't interested in. So. Uh, that really helps me if, you know, if you just in this little 30 second uh, intro, you, uh, if you can, you know, say what you're most concerned about or are most interested in or, or, or just what's going on with you right now, anything, you can say anything, but, but it's, uh, I, I like to hear from people. So um, anyway, uh, what, first of all, I want to thank Wesley. This would not have happened without Wesley. You can... He, he suggested it, and then and then I wrote back to him, and I said, "Well, maybe." And uh, would you do it for me? And he said, "Sure." So uh, here we are. Never met. So so anyway, he just took it over and uh, turned it into something professional. So I'm just I'm really uh, uh, inspired. And anyway, thank you, thank you, thanks. So who uh, and and what, Wesley? Are you going to call on people or? Yes, I have the uh, I have the order in which they uh, they signed up uh, okay. in here. So we'll just go that way if that's easiest. Sure, sure. And I might make some notes. So if you see me looking down, I'm just I'm. It's because I'm making notes. Okay. okay. So. so let's start off with David Chambers. Uh, hi everybody. I'm David Chambers. Uh, I currently live in Atlanta. Um, and I think what I'm looking to gain the most out of this is just like a, a deeper insight into like the things I'm already personally doing, because as I was reading your book, I kind of started to see trends that I, that I was doing, um, but a much deeper and well-rounded way to execute them. Okay. Okay. Great. Thanks. And now we have Francisco Cabrera. Hey everyone, everybody. I'm Francisco Cabrera. Um, I'm in Florida. I went to school with some of you. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I'm looking to, right now I'm looking to, to learn more about um, kind of shifting my approach when things aren't working. Um, you know, each actor is a different, you know, has a, is a different, you know, person, a different communicator. And I think, um, at times, you know, you're, you're maybe on take eight and you're like, oh no, I need to fully change my approach because uh -huh. we're not getting there. So um, I'm interested in that. I'm interested in that shift in, in direction Yeah. when things aren't working out. Okay, great, thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. And next we have Denise Jimenez. Hi, I'm sorry, I was having a little trouble connecting. It's okay. Uh, hi, it's nice to meet you. Thank you so much for having me and all of us. Oh, sure. But thanks for coming. Thank you for coming, everybody. Yeah. Um, a quick intro. Uh, so I'm Denise. I went to school with Wasi at St. John's. Um, I'm an actress and filmmaker, and I currently work in post-production. And the reason that I'm here is because I did start out as an actor. And, you know, the more that I learn and the more that I do things, I, I've done directing before, but it's something that I want to do more of, of course. So I guess what I want to take away from this is um, it's how to see the bigger picture and not concentrate so much on like the little things. You know, as an actor, I have the habit of the moment by moment. Um, so it's just really taking that leadership in. Um, so yeah, that's me. Thanks. And next we've got Bobby A. Bobby? Hi. I don't know if it's me. Oh, first off, I'm working. I'm sorry. Hold on. 
Should we come back to Bobby? Yeah, we can. We let's let's come back to Bobby. Uh, and let's move on. There oh, he is. Wait, no, I see Bobby. Yeah, there he you is. See me? Hi, yeah. hello. How Hi, you doing nice today? to meet you. I am doing well at you too. Uh, so I'm a writer, director um, in New York City. I have produced two different series, and the reason why I'm here today is because I am writing a book. I'm so honored to even be here. And basically, I just want to sharpen up all my skills as a director okay. and understand that there's levels to this, and I'm going to get to that level. Okay, okay. Your audio is a little tricky, but anyway, we'll we'll figure it out when we okay. get to questions. We definitely will. Uh, let's see. Next, we have Paolo Sesti. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Paolo Sesti. I am a 16-year-old Latino filmmaker based in Miami, Florida. And uh, if there's one thing I want to take out from this uh, seminar or class uh, is the best way to work with non-actors. I've had a little bit of trouble with that uh, in my high school film career, and I want to see like what's the best way to approach non-actors. Okay. Great. Next, we have Alina Nadine. Hi, Alina. Hi. Hi, guys. I'm calling in from Berlin, Germany. So uh, cool to be with all of you. Um, I guess what I'm most interested in for this meeting is just getting to know more about how to work in prep, um, especially considering the first meetings you have with actors before you even start um, talking or rehearsing, for example. That would be really interesting for me. Thanks. And next we have Alan Guillermo Gutierrez. Alan. Hi. Alan. Hi. Hi, hi, how are you, everybody? Um, I'm Alan Gutierrez, I'm from Mexico City. I took a directing a workshop, directing actor workshop with Judith a long time ago, I think like 12, 13 years ago. Oh so <laughs> I'm a filmmaker, I, I'm also a, an actor and I'm a, a film teacher. So all my classes are based on the books of, of course, of Judith Weston, so I'm so happy to be here. Thank you very much for the opportunity. And nice yeah. to meet you, everybody. Yeah. And next we've got Brent Darty. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm an actor and uh, screenwriter. I'm here in Los Angeles as well, Judith. Uh, so, hi, I'm your neighbor, apparently. Um, I am uh, uh, slated to direct my first feature later this year, hopefully, if things go according to plan. And uh, I would like to kind of piggyback on what Paulo said and uh, talk about working with actors of various skill levels um, and sort of rehearsal techniques that we can uh, use to help uh, some of my more experienced actors along. Great, thanks. Thank you. Next, we've got Chavez Cayley. Oh, just raise your hand. Oh, okay. Oh, hi. Hi, Chavez. How you doing? I'm Chavez Cayley, a MFA graduate from Florida State University, also a former classmate of Wosley. I'm just happy to be here on this call. Uh, the main thing that I want to learn from this call is when you're using action verbs with actors on set, and then your different ways to communicate when you run out of those said action words. Okay. Big time. Big time. Great, yeah. great. So after Chavez, we've got Ganesh Genus. Hi. Hi, Ganesh. Hi, I'm Ganesh. Uh, I'm from Florida, but I live in Queens. I also need a haircut. And uh, <laughs> I'm just here to uh, learn from everybody, you know, steal ideas, help <laughs> come out on the other side a little, uh, little bit smarter. OK. OK. Next, we've got Jasmine Peck. Jasmine, oh, hi, Jasmine. Hi, nice to meet you guys. Um, I went to school with Waz a long time ago now um, at St. John's. Um, I'm working as an assistant production company right now. Uh, I'm in LA. Being in a place is just sitting in your room. I don't know if it counts as being somewhere, but uh, that's the that's the city. Um, I'm interested in sort of just the idea of 
staying sharp and uh, refreshing myself. I haven't directed in like a year. Um, and picking up some tips of like maintaining the tools in solitude, especially given everything that's going on. Right um, so yeah, that's me. Okay, okay. And yeah. next you got- Let me make a note of that because that's going to be important. How to, how to keep sharp in, soli in solitude in, in lockdown. So I want to make sure I talk, say, try, try to say something about that. Okay. Okay, great, thanks. And thanks. next is Jason Wishnow. Jason, okay. Hi. Um, so um, I guess like Alan, I took a workshop with Judith several years ago, so that's my connection to all of this. And when I saw this was happening, I was so excited because it's been a while. Um, I've, I think, you know, I was just curious to hear what you would say in any setting like this. I, um, like Jasmine, I'm curious to hear, um, you know, how we could continue to sharpen our skills, maybe in a situation like this, or, you know, even for me, I feel like my directing career has been somewhat start and stop off and on and how I can keep sharp for when I go back into my new projects. Great. Great, thanks. Now we've got uh, Jessica Boyer. Hi, my name is oh, Jessica hi. Boyer. I'm a Florida State University College Motion Picture um, MFA student um, directing specialist and what I would like to learn from the class is um, how to explore and to um, learn an actor's range and just um, new directing techniques to take on set. Okay great. And next we've got Martine McDonald. Hi everyone, um, I'm Martine. I'm in Los Angeles. Uh, I have a lot of the same questions as everyone here, but I'm specifically interested in working with non-actors, um, young people, uh, children and teenagers. So it's excellent to see uh, young filmmakers here as well who are, who are still working with high school students. Um, and just really happy to be here. Great, thank you. Up next, we've got Tyler, Tyler Monsine. I hope I'm saying that right. Can you see me? I haven't used Zoom before. Is this working? Is it? Yes. Okay, yeah. cool. Hi, um, I'm living in Los Angeles from Florida originally, by pure coincidence. Um, huge fan of directing actors and um, amazing audiobook. Incredible. And I just want to learn more, I guess, about introducing roles to actors without, I don't want to, ex I have a tendency to over explain or talk too much. I just want to find ways to kind of keep a mystery alive without feeling apathetic about not answering questions. How to, how to make it so that I can watch an actor perform without feeling like I'm neglecting anything. Wait, what was the last thing you said? Just how to, um, how to keep questions in the air. You talk a lot in your book about questions and you know, how would you do this and how to bridge the gap between my understanding of the character and posing a question to the actor without making it like as if I don't, as if I'm stepping back or something. Right. I'm not sure if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. Okay. Totally. Thank yeah, you. Thanks. Going back to me. Yeah. Thanks. And up next, we've got Ryan Booth. Hey, how's it going? How are you? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm a filmmaker uh, living in New York, uh, New York City. And, um, yeah, I was set to direct my first feature in May, so that's kind of um, oh. uh, indefinite. It's on hold for a while, um, but it was going to be a very small movie, um, and so I'm I'm kind of making use of this time to just sharpen myself, you know, um, to to prepare and to get better and get ready for whenever I am able to to make the film. But um, primarily, I'll be working with both professional and non-professional actors within my cast, um, and so. That's definitely something that I've, I'm uh, quite interested in, in chatting about. Other than that, just here to listen and learn, for sure. Okay. Okay, great, thanks. Thank you. And now we've got Miguel Soliman. Hi, Miguel. 
Hi Judith, how are you? Great. Hi Wesley. Um, so I would like to look at um, directing language and directing with facts, as you mentioned in the book. And um, I'm not sure if this is even a topic that we can perhaps delve into or if I'm imagining it. But um, I, I was thinking of directing as I read the book, um, directing sort of by by your personality or sort of honing in on what your voice is. Because I think you, you do talk about directors having different um, ways of communicating and some types might be a stronger personality or come off as one and not mean to. So um, that's what I mean by I want, I want to look at language in general from a director's perspective. And then I am also a, um, I'm an instructor and a programmer for a film festival. So I'd like to also, if we can, maybe towards the end, we can talk about um, teaching directing and, and where it's going and how that could be changing. Because I feel like when I was in school, directing the actor was not, um, was not a thing. It was, it was a void that I felt I needed to seek. And so I did take the acting lessons on my own. Well, good. Yeah, I, I wanted to do that investigation, but then I found that with that, there was a lot of this, um, this sense of, of, of doing the psychoanalyzing of a thing rather than speaking with the facts. And there was a lot of competition in that, in the acting world. So coming mm -hmm. back into the directing chair from that world, felt like I was always being rivaled or challenged or I had to step up to that with an actor. Really? Okay, I'll, I'll ask you more about that. Okay. Later. That's, that's, uh, uh, that's interesting. Okay. And next, uh, we're back with Bobby A. Oh, no. Bobby spoke. No, he, he got to go. Okay, I wrote it down. Sorry, that was me. Uh, BP is next. Hi there. I am so sorry. I am literally just wrapping up at the grocery store. It was a long line. My name is Vincent Powell. I am a filmmaker in Los Angeles. I just got my MFA from USC along with Jasmine Peck, and we're out here rushing it in these Los Angeles streets. Uh, I see another good, good friend of mine, Ryan Booth, on the call. And so grateful for you for taking time to do this. I directed my first feature last fall, and I taught, uh, well, I took a class and then assistant taught uh, two courses where we use your book as the main and only text. And so a uh, fan of your work, and your book was in my hotel room while I was filming my feature. Of course, I didn't bring you to set, but you were getting me through it every night. And so I just want to say thank you for that. If there's anything that I could uh, take away from or grow from from this call, particularly, I believe it's about collaborating with actors that, um, a lot of times we talk about non-actors, but I have this apprehension of working with actors that are far more seasoned. As far as like, where do, where do I start directing and where do, where do I stop? If I get Morgan Freeman on my set, how much direction does Morgan Freeman need, you know, compared to, you know, a, a NYU Tisch grad? And so I think that, that causes me some apprehension sometimes, depending on what setting I'm in. Great. 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 And what about you, Wesley? <laughs> well, uh, so I'm Wesley, Wesley Castillo. I'm a, a writer, director, and most recently uh, an instructor at the Georgia Film Academy. I'm based in Atlanta, and uh, I'm hoping to learn from you all today. This is super exciting for me as well as just getting to see all these uh, incredible minds here, getting to talk, directing, and making movies. So uh, anything I can get from that, I'm ecstatic. Okay. Well, wonderful. Thank you. These are all great uh, things to want to uh, hear about, and hopefully I can... Uh, now, here's what I want to suggest. I, I think people also have specific questions they want to bring up, but I, 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 there's enough material that you just gave me that I can talk about a few things right away. Shall I go ahead and do that? Or, um, yeah, because uh, there are especially a couple of things that came up more than once, like, uh, like working with non-actors. So l let me just, uh, or a, a blend, you know, a blend of uh, professional and non-professional actors. Um, first of all, here's what, uh, here's, here's the bottom line. Don't ask non-actors to act. It's really, I, it's, I know it sounds simple, simplistic, but it's really true. If you, uh, uh, you, you, if, yeah, don't act, 
don't ask non-actors to act. Cast them uh, as close to their own personalities as you can, and then tell them that that's what you've done. When you say, you know, you are, I, you know, I'm casting you in this role because you are exactly right for it, just the way you are. You don't have to do any acting, and I don't want you to. I want you to um, respond to the other actors and to the circumstances as, you know, as they hit you, you know, and, um, uh, and, and I, I don't, and I don't want you to act. I, I, I think that's, I think that's so crucial. I think it's so, so crucial. I, I once saw, for a while, about eight years ago, I was, eight or 10 years ago, I was watching a lot of commentaries. And um, luckily, because, you know, eventually they disappeared. So I was really glad I watched them, uh, you know, a whole lot of them back then. And um, there was one, um, Billy Bob Thornton did a commentary for Sling Blade. And um, uh, he, he said that, you know, I don't know if you were, anybody remembers that movie. I, it was, I still remember it was a really wonderful movie. And, and uh, in the early uh, scene, uh, Sling Blade is in an institution. And, um, you know, there's somebody, there's a, a man wiping, uh, mopping the floor. So Billy Bob wanted a, a non-actor. He wanted to have a real janitor playing that role. He felt it was important to have a real janitor playing the janitor in that scene. So he got this real janitor and the guy looks fantastic. And he's, you know, and, um, and then uh, Billy Bob liked him so much that he said, you know, I want to give you some lines and I want to, you know, and I want you to get into a fight with me, with, with my character. And the, and <laughs> the guy said, well, I wouldn't do that. I, I, I wouldn't, uh, I, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't get in a fight with a with a patient, and um, and so uh, and so. Billy, but, but, but but it's acting, you know. It's not you. You don't have to feel bad like you're doing something that's wrong. It it, it it's okay. You won't get in trouble, uh, you know. But but it'll be it'll be great for the scene. And the guy said, but but no, I, I wouldn't do that. I'm not going to do that. I wouldn't do it. So I just thought that was the best lesson. You know, that guy was like a great, was fabulous because he refused to do something that he wasn't trained for. He was a very good janitor, but he, do you know what I mean? And he was wonderful in the scene, but if he tried to get into a fight with a patient, which is something that he in real life would never do, it would just look like bad acting, okay? So, um, uh, I don't know that, that there's something central about that, that you, uh, you, you, you don't try to manipulate them. And, and it's going to mean that you're probably going to have less, you know, less coverage, less, um, uh, you know, less options about, uh, about your camera, uh, camera shots. And, um, uh, you know, and less, less repetition of, of, uh, you know, less, a repetition of lots of takes. So um, I, I think that's, uh, you know, if you've got all non-actors, I think you really want to keep them non-actors. Don't just turn them into poorly trained actors, okay? Because, uh, you know, after take one, they're not non-actors never anymore. You know, before take one, they've never acted before. After take one, they have. So don't let them, don't turn them into poorly trained actors. Uh, say, I want you to stay a non-actor. That's what I like. I'm really happy to have you. Now, if you're working, you know, in a high school situation, and in fact, the only reason you're working with non-actors is because professional actors are not available to you, then still tell them, I'm really glad I have you. I think you're perfect. And I've changed, you know, I wrote my scene for you. And, uh, you know, that, that's going to be your best bet. It really, really is. And, um, and, and you can still use a few little things. The, you know, the, you know, intentions, objectives, you know, like you can say, well, what, what do you think you're, you know, what do you think you want in this scene? And, um, you know, and the, and the person will say, uh, the, non-professional actor might say, well, I want him to get out of my, uh, get out of my face. And then you can say, great, great. Let's do that. Do you know what I mean? You can, you can, um, uh, you can 
reinforce this idea of the objective or the verb. Or you could say, you know, I mean, this is just like when you have to go to the store and, and they don't have anything that you want and the guy is rude to you. It's just like that. You know, so you, you, so that's the as if, that's what I'm gonna mention. Somebody said, what do you do when you run out of verbs? The as if, the as if is, 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 is the bomb, it's great. So, you know, so, so it's like, you don't always have to have a verb for everything, but um, it's great if you can start to figure out metaphors. In other words, the as if, the metaphor, parallel, analogy, you know, the it's like when, Mike Nichols used to call it the it's like when. This is like when you, you know, this is like when you go to the store, they don't have what you want and the guy is rude to you. Uh, and, but it might, but the situation, the script might be, you know, on a spaceship, right? So, um, yeah, so it's, a, it's an analogy, it, this is, it's like when. So you can do, use those with uh, non-professional actors as well, that those can be, uh, you know, those are simple to understand. It's, it's, not, it's not a big, big jargon a big uh, jargony kind of thing. Uh, getting into a deep uh, analysis about backstory, this is gonna be less helpful for non-professional actors, but uh, you know, like, like, you know, so this guy has been beaten up his whole life, and if the person has not been beaten up their, beaten up their whole life and they're not an actor, they go, yeah, you know, uh, okay. <laughs> but they don't, they don't have training to, to uh, bring that to life, but the objective does can can work with non-professional actors and the uh, and the metaphor. The it's like when those are very helpful. Backstory not so much. Um, you know, uh, invented backstory or backstory that's even in the uh, you know because you might say to a, uh, somebody who's a non-professional untrained actor, well, this guy has has had this and this happen to him. He says, well, and he'll just say, well, that hasn't that hasn't happened to me. I don't know anything about it. And you can't argue with that, right? Now, as far as working with professional actors and non-professional actors, um, uh, you should, if you possibly can, I don't know what's happened to these commentaries that the directors were doing, you know, 10 years ago. Uh, I, do they still exist on the internet somewhere or do you have to buy the disc from, you know, get, get the disc from Netflix? Well, is it still possible to get them? Anyway, if you possibly can, you, you have to find um, the uh, commentary of Paul Greengrass for the movie uh, United 93. I mean, no, was it United? Yes, United 93. Um, it's about the uh, flight on September 11th, the one that um, went down in the Pennsylvania uh, field. Um, and so it recreates, you know, that flight and the, and the, the people, the heroic actions of the people who were on that flight. Anyway, he, uh, he hired, um, flight attendants to pay, to play the flight attendants, pilots to play the pilots and air traffic controllers to play the air traffic controllers. In fact, the air traffic controllers that he hired were the ones who had been on duty on that day. Okay, and um, now that sadly wasn't true of the flight attendants or the pilots because all those people died. But you know, the flight attendants were, uh, but they knew what it was like to be a flight attendant and they, their ability to imagine what it might've been like to be a flight attendant on that flight was infinite you know they, they didn't have to do any work they didn't have to be trained they you know i mean, I mean I, i'm sure that every flight attendant every pilot in the world when they heard the news of that they wondered what would i have done you know their their imagination was already going there on that you know as the news hit the as the news hit the the televisions on that day so um so they didn't have to do any acting. Does that make sense? Didn't have to do any acting, but he'd hired for the, for the passengers on the flight, he'd hired professional actors. He'd, uh, he'd hired uh, professional actors who um, were not well known. 
That was a deliberate choice to hire professional actors who are not well known, but we're professional actors. And um, so he said, you know, they just get, just get them to talk, talk to each other like people. The listening, you know, the talking and listening, get them to talk to each other like people. And um, so it, that's, that's the best, you know, the kind of that story of how he worked on that is the best uh, suggestion I have for getting uh, professional and non-professional actors to work together is, is to, you know, treat everybody like people. The characters are all people. And, um, and then don't act, ask the, uh, the non-actors to act. Okay. All right. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Um, I think it, it could be fun to uh, to look at the the other uh, the other side of the spectrum with what uh, Mr. Powell asked. Yes. Mm -hmm. About Morgan Freeman. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't have to direct Morgan Freeman. In fact, don't. He doesn't like it. I I mean I, I know that from reading uh, 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 interviews with him. You know uh, anybody that you um, uh, let's see where are you the person. Uh, who said that? Oh boy, I'm having trouble keeping up with everybody. Oh, oh, Vince down there. Yeah, okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Okay. Oh, okay. I can. Okay. So, um, yeah, if if you're working with stars, um, you still should prepare uh, script analysis very deeply. Mm -hmm. But the main reason that you're preparing script analysis is not to give direction to them, but to keep up with them. You know, sure. to, uh, to be able to listen to their ideas and, um, and, and uh, I don't know, not shoot them down right away. That's gonna, that's gonna be your best reason for being very prepared when you get yeah. to work with, uh, with stars, is, sure. is so that you have had a lot of ideas, you, you, you know your own idea, but a, a, a very strong principle of my uh, script analysis is to have more than one idea. You have your idea yeah. that you're you in are. love with and think is fantastic, and then you make yourself come up with two more ideas for the same thing, you know, for the same mm -hmm. moment or the same scene or the same character. And you, you make yourself uh, find way, a way to abs absolutely believe in, in another way to do it. I, I just think that that's, it's, I, you know, I call it the technique of three possible. It's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's there in directing actors, the original directing actors, but I've, I've expanded on it since then. It's more expanded on in the film director's intuition. And then it's even more expanded on in the uh, uh, revision that I did for, um, for the audio book this past, which came out in September. And I'm working on a, um, you know, a, uh, a, another edition of Directing Actors, which will be out next year, uh, a, 21st, a 25th anniversary. I mean, it's 25 years. Wow, Can you wow. come on. Um, yeah, so it'll be a 25th anniversary edition. It's, it's, uh, it's actually pretty different. And a lot, I mean, it's this, exactly the same, but also very different. And, you know, it's certainly updated. And, um, uh, wait, what was I saying before I got off on that? I, I didn't mean to turn this into an infomercial, by the way. Um, you were talking about the the theory of having multiple ideas. Yeah, yeah. So I really, really uh, bear down on that. The longer I've taught, the longer I've taught, you know, I mean, it's 25 years since, uh, you know, since the first directing actress came out. And the longer I've taught, the more I bear, I bear down on that idea of in your preparation, you know, find your own, find your own voice, your own idea, what you what you feel it is. And you know, as clearly as you can, absolutely do that. But then take the time to make yourself um, think, well, how could it work otherwise? Now, I should give you an example. You know, like, like what if um, uh, your, your idea uh, is that the two, these two characters have uh, been in love, secretly in love since childhood, okay? And um, that, that could be a very fruitful idea for a lot of different situations. But um, 
but I think still think it's good, it's helpful to take time to say, what if it's the opposite? What if they, uh, you know, their, their secret backstory is that they've uh, never gotten along? You know, that, that uh, you know, they've grown up together, they've been next door to each other, but they, they, never, they never were right for each other. I don't know, I mean, I, we don't have a script, so that's, you know, it's very abstract here. But to, but to kind of make yourself uh, think of more than one way that you can think of the characters. Now, the most helpful thing about doing this is that it prepares you for the actor to have a completely different idea than you have. Okay, so that you, yeah. so that when the actor has a completely different idea, when he says, you know what, I don't think these people like each other at all, then you're not going, <gasps> you know, because because that, that, that can easily make you think, oh my God, he hates my script, he hates my ideas, he's never going to, he's never going to trust anything I say. And if you already know that there's more than one way to understand the character or understand the script, then you'll have, you'll be so much in so much better position to, um, you know, to, to not get freaked out when, uh, when an actor has a different idea than yours. Really good point. And it doesn't mean you have to take his idea. You know, you could, you can say, ah, I, I, you can say, that's a great idea. I, to I totally see where you're coming from. And then you can say, and, and yet you, you could say, and yet there's this scene, there's this line, there's this, uh, there's this thing that happens that makes me really wonder about that. You know, what, what has been, you know, what has been going on? Uh, uh, do you know what I mean? So, so that you can, I do. thank you so much. So, so you can, it, it makes you flexible and it makes sure. you able to secure them. But also the other thing, if you, if you're going to work with a movie star, look them up, you know, look them up on, um, uh, you know, find as many interviews with them as you can. Because you know, I've read interviews with Morgan Freeman, and he doesn't like to be directed. <laughs> so that's what I've that's what I've read. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't talked with anybody personally that's worked with him, but um, but but I have read that. And of course, you know, you have to take everything with a grain of salt because sometimes actors say certain things about themselves, and it's they're not right. <laughs> They're wrong, you know, so it, it's, uh, but it's still get as much information as you can and, um, you know, talk to people that have worked with him and, um, and then ask him, what do you, how do you want me to, how do you want to work with, uh, how do you want me to work with you? Do you want me to stay back and wait till you come to me? Or do you want me to uh, jump in? Ask them, you know, you, you, you can, I mean, you know, one thing about movie stars is, um, they're surrounded by people who, who don't tell them the truth. You know, if you, if you really think of them as people, uh, people with problems, people with uh, problems like we all have, then one of their problems is that they're, they have all these uh, yes men around them. No one, you know, lots of people, lots of people uh, telling them that they're, everything's great when it isn't. And, uh, so you can be the person who tells them the truth, you know? But the thing is, you, you, you wanna have a relationship. Now, I wanna say, what, Miguel, Miguel, what were you asking about? Oh, directing by personality. That was such an interesting question because you have a strong personality, don't you? I've been told. Yes, well, that's cool. So, uh, uh, have you have you gotten in trouble for that or or uh... no? It's never been trouble, but like you said, I think that you come to discover these things sometimes at inopportune moments when perhaps you want to establish that relationship with someone, or specifically a trust with an actor. Um, and it can happen for any number of reasons, as I'm sure experience has taught us all. But um, I think it's just that. I think it's perhaps balancing knowing when to say something in a certain way and, and not be someone's yes person, but then also um, knowing that there's ground to do that safely, I think is what I've learned. Well, here's, a, I'll give you a percentage. Listen more than you talk. Hear your voice less than 50% of the time. That's, that's a place to start. Um, 
and uh, and then ask questions. Somebody somebody else asked about asking questions. Uh, you know, I, I think you should always start with what are your thoughts about this? What what do you think the character wants? What what do you think is what do you think this scene is about? What do you think the character's spine is? I think it, you you can really you I, I'm I'm not sure how you can go wrong if you always uh, ask, oh, what do you think before you pipe up? And um, and one of the things you can ask again is how do you like to work? It's really okay to not talk so much. Somebody said they overexplained. Who is that? I forget. Yeah. Hi, Tyler. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just stop. You know what? I learned this once. This is one of my favorite stories. <laughs> this is a long time ago. I was talking to somebody. I was telling them a story that I thought was incredibly interesting. And I was talking and talking and talking. And all of a sudden, I saw them go away in their eyes. You know, I just saw it. And I thought, oh gosh, what am I going to do? They're not interested in this. But I have to finish my story. And then in the next moment, I said to myself, or do you? And then I just stopped. I stopped my story. I stopped in mid-sentence. You know what happened? Nothing. They didn't notice. You know why? They weren't listening. So you can stop talking. You, do, you know, if you started on a train of thought and you feel you're, the person you're talking to going away, you don't have to finish the train of thought. You can stop and you can, you can say, or what do you think? You could say, or let's just try something. Or, you know, why don't we wait to see, how, you know, you, you um, I, I mean, I think the or what do you think is a very helpful thing to say. You know, engage them, collaborate with them. Um, uh, you know, um, I don't know, just to go back to Miguel, you know, just, you, you can even say, I've been told I have a strong personality Actually, inside, I'm a teddy bear, and that's what I think, anyway, and about you. And um, so, uh, but I'm tough enough to hear criticism. So if you ever feel like I'm coming on too strong, would you please tell me? Would you do, would you do me that favor of, of please telling me if, there, if you ever feel like I'm coming on too strong? Okay. I think... Um, one of the most important things you can do with, certainly with a star or with anybody, is to do, a, this is a new thing, not in the original book, uh, but I call it, you know, exchanging a promise with them uh, or an agreement, you know, to say, I want you, say to the actor, I want you to be able to say anything to me, anything in the whole world. I, if any complaint you have, a complaint about the script, a complaint about your, um, you know, something that's going on technically, a complaint about wardrobe, a complaint about, even a complaint about other actors, which is actually unprofessional to do. Most actors, you know, know they shouldn't complain about other actors, but you could say even that, even, you know, even, even that, if you have a complaint about another actor, you can tell me. And even if you have a complaint about me, you can tell me, and I want you to tell me, I want you to tell me anything that is bothering you. But here's what I ask in return. And you, say, and you can say, and I will listen, and I will take it on, a, on the chin if I have to, and I will do something about it, whatever is in my power. And, um, and then you say, but here's what I wanna ask of you. I, wanna, I want you to promise me that you will tell me these things in private. You will be in so much better shape if you do this with everybody, even if they're, you know, well, just your, your friends, you know, that have never acted before. The thing you don't want happening, you don't want gossip, you don't want people yelling at um, anybody on the set. Okay. And you don't want to be living in fear of that, 
Because if you live in, if you're living in fear of that, I don't know, it just shuts you down. So that's uh, that's no good. Really quickly, guys, uh, just a quick flag on the play. Sorry, completely my fault. Our our, our boy Danny Malone didn't get a chance to introduce himself. Uh, I, just, I just want him to get a chance to do that before we continue. Sorry about that, man. No, you're all good. I just, um, my, hi, my name is Danny Malone. Uh, I'm classmate of Waz's. I was about two years ahead of him at St. John's and a year behind him at Florida State. I'll be graduating uh, this summer. Uh, your book was incredibly helpful to me on my thesis uh, this past uh, this past semester. Um, really what I kind of want to learn about is l figuring out ways to empower an actor who seems really hesitant to speak on their beliefs and their opinions on a character or a scene. I feel like you kind of just touched on it actually, which is, which is weird. Um, but when they seem like they just want to hear your ideas on the project, what are some ways you can, can really get them to, to feel empowered and, and let their mind run free? That's, that's what I would like to yeah, well, I think you have to start with your belief system, you know, because I've, I've, I've heard directors say, you know, some actors come to the set uh, uh, and, uh, an empty slate. And I just don't believe anybody's an empty slate. I just don't believe it. Everybody has experiences. I mean, there are some people who are not articulate in the sense of being able to um, uh, you, you know, say, this is my idea. Do you know what I mean? Not, not everybody has that, this is my idea, you know, that intellectual confidence uh, or interest even sometimes. But, but everybody has experiences and, and that means everybody has um, impressions. Everybody has impressions. So that's what you could say. What, are you, what impressions do you have? What, or connections. What connections do you have? here's something uh, you, you could say, and, and you know, you have to do this so it doesn't feel intrusive, mm -hmm. but you could say, you know what I'd love to find out? I'd love to find out if there are three ways that you think you're like this character and three ways you think you aren't like them. Hmm. It's interesting. I don't know, I just get, I don't know, you know, I can't tell you what to do next, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I, think, uh, I think something always happens. Yeah. I think something always happens. Ideas come from that. Okay. Uh, I don't know, does that help? Yeah, absolutely, thank you. That's... Okay, but uh, yeah, if the word idea, sometimes the word idea is like too much for some people. It's like, you know, say, I'm not, I'm not that, you know, cerebral, yeah. which is fine. They're not, that's not part of their job to be cerebral, really. It's their, their job is to be impulsive. So, so, um, Okay, so you could call it impressions or connections instead of ideas. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> what else? What else should I do here? Um, we've, got, we've got some people either getting ready to shoot a feature or uh, having already shot it. So maybe, maybe those people could uh, come forward and talk a little bit about that and their concerns. Yes, great. Speak up. Who, who was that? The person who was supposed to shoot in May. That's right. That was me. <laughs> I'd already forgotten that I was supposed to be shooting in May. It just had to remove it from my mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Well, uh, let me try a little something that I, I thought of to to try to show you, and um, I'm just gonna have to move my my laptop back here a little bit. And um, I don't know if this would be helpful or not. I mean, of course, one thing, you know, read, read, read. Uh, um, I, I went and I was trying to fix this area up a little bit. So I, I, I put out some of my favorite books, um, Kazan on directing, oops, what happened? Kazan on directing uh, is fantastic. Cassavetes on Cassavetes. Kieslowski on Kieslowski, you know, I, I, I don't, uh, um, let's see. Uh, and of course, uh, Sidney Lumet's book, Making Movies. Uh, those are the books that I think are just really crucial, really, really crucial 
Um, I mean, you don't have to be uh, the kind of filmmaker that Cassavetes was. He was a unique, and Kieslowski too. They were both unique. Uh, one of they were both one of a kind. And, and it's not that that anybody should try to imitate their methods, but their uh, their devotion, their absolute devotion to the deepest truth that that each you know to, to thinking of each actor that came in front of them as 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 a, a, a creature who is in possession of a deep truth somewhere. And, and that, yeah, every actor that came in front of them, they, they had the idea that that act, that, every, that it was a person that was in possession of some deep truth. And that, that, and they also, the belief that everybody wants to express their deep truth. And the idea that, you know, that we're all a vessel for whatever that deep truth is. I mean, David Lynch writes like, like that too, about that, that kind of thing, the big fish, he, the way he puts it in his own unique way. But um, so th those things are inspiring. And, you know, the, the, if, you, if you can get around to, to thinking of yourself uh, that way, that, um, uh, you know, that, that you're going to find out what makes this actor tick, you know, what, what, what turns them on, what, 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 what's important to them, what, what have they got to say, and how can, how can you help them? I mean, you will have already cast them, so, you know, you've got to take responsibility for your casting, you know, so you don't cast them and then turn them into another person. That'd be like marrying somebody and then deciding you want to turn them into another person. I mean, that's not a good, that's not a good idea, right? <laughs> if you marry somebody, then, you know, you've got to make something work. Uh, you get to, get to. I don't mean you got to. You get to. It's very exciting. And, uh, but you don't, you don't have to. You can even get divorced. But, but uh, you know, you, you, you get to kind of find out what is the, the most, you know, the, the wonderful things they have to offer. So, and that's true about actors too. Um, so that's one thing, read, read those books. They're just invaluable. Uh, do listen to my audiobook. It's really good and you can get it for free. It's on a, you know, it's on Spotify. It's, uh, you know, if you don't have an Audible subscription, it's on Spotify and it's, uh, it's on libraries too, so. There's a list of, of places that it's on, and some, you know, there should, libraries, of course, would be free. And I think Spotify is free if you have a, you know, if you're signed up for it. So, uh, yeah, anyway, I, I, I think it, you know, I think it goes deeper and, and, and will be helpful. And, and then there's more, there's, uh, you know, more, more uh, up-to-date references. But um, then what else, you know, oh, hang out with actors. Of course, now we're not allowed to hang out with anybody, but, but what about, um, I don't know. I mean, is it possible to get in on, you know, actors chat, uh, chat groups or, or something to, uh, I mean, you know, people are just wondering what more to do, you know, to interview, you know, to, to, to call up your actor friends and say, I want to interview you. I want to, I want to find out, um, what uh you know i want to ask you what you what the actors are doing that you what what directors do that you hate what directors do that you love i want to i want to interview that and and then ask them why are you an actor be sure you only ask that question if you've got an hour or two to spare Actors love to talk about that. Can I ask a question? It's their life story, basically. Yep. Yeah. Um, rehearsals. I'm, I'm curious to talk about the rehearsal process. I know a lot of us have had experience doing short films. Uh, and we, we have various you know, amounts of resources. So I think we can comfortably all speak from the independent level, obviously. But what do rehearsals look like if you don't have that actor in person until a certain day? 
and that day is a shooting day. How, how do you, how would you advise us to kind of consider processing, rehearsing, especially in this environment? Well, well, here's the thing. Um, in order to have real rehearsal, there, you do have to have some time. And if you don't have real rehearsal, if you don't have time, you're going to rehearse with the camera running. That's the way it is. So, um, uh, I don't know, dig it. Uh, you, you know, I, I recommend, you know, if we had all this time on our hands, but weren't forced to not be, you know, weren't forced to be away from each other, then I would suggest, you know, doing practice rehearsals, getting together with actors and, and, but, you know, that's not allowed now. So, so, um, uh, you know, I think that you should learn how to rehearse a single scene, two or three page scene in a two hour time period. I think you should learn how to do that. I think you should learn how to have enough to do that it can stay interesting and fun and exciting and forward moving for two full hours. That's a long time for a short scene, right? But I think you should learn how to do that and practice that over and over and then you'll get better. <laughs> you'll get better at, at, at uh, dealing with having, you know, uh, 30 minutes or even 15 minutes or even five minutes, you'll get better if you, if you practice doing it in two hours. Does that make sense? It, uh, uh, it, it, there, there aren't really, there aren't, there isn't a magic wand for that. Uh, you, you know, that if, if you really haven't seen the, met the actors at all until the day of shooting, they haven't met each other and you haven't met them, First of all, you've got to acknowledge what a weird situation that is. I mean, that is weird. I still, you know, I cannot help you understand why the agents and the producers want to do that. They want to do that. They think that's perfectly okay for the actors to meet each other and the director on the first day of shooting. That's nuts as far as I'm concerned. It's nuts. You know, I mean, you've got to at least uh, Skype with everybody or Zoom with everybody ahead of time, get as close, you know, it, you, you know think of it as, as an intimate relationship. And, you know, and, uh, uh, tell them why you wrote this thing, tell them w what matters to you about it, ask them for, you know, I I'll tell you, this, story, this thing, why are you an actor? It's, they will talk. You know, if they if they feel you really want to know, you know, if they feel that you really care and want to know, okay, and maybe you need to tell them first what why you're an artist yourself. I don't know, but uh, or but you know, don't assume they're as interested in you as you are in them. They might not be, but uh, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Get you know, and 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 make it easier. I, I was actually I've been I've been consulting, you know, I, I do these one-on-one -on -one consultations and now they're all on Zoom, but, um, or, or Skype, but I used to, just, uh, actually I was with somebody in Berlin, actually, uh, last couple of weeks. And um, uh, he, he's doing something that's actually gonna have part opera in it. So his big concern was, how do I direct these actors where some of them are gonna be opera singers and, and opera stars, stars of the opera world. And some of them are, will not have acted before much at all. And um, so we, we talked a lot about, you know, and he was gonna have a Zoom call with this big opera star, big diva, big opera diva, and the casting director and the producers wanted her to do like a screen test over Zoom. So I said, well, that's terrible, you know? She won't be lit right. She won't, you know, I mean, at least the thing about a screen test is you're lit properly. And, uh, you know, that, that uh, this is so unfair. So the only thing you can do at the beginning is to talk about it. Frankly, this is, you know, this is a crazy thing. This is not, a, you say this is not an audition. I mean, that's what the producers wanted. They wanted an audition, right? They wanted to see if she could act for film, right? And, um, and I said, you know, you've got to tell her it's not an audition. It can't be an audition because we're not in the same room. 
And you say, but we're going to get to know each other. That's all. We're going to get to know each other and, and, and explore the characters. And if we feel like reading a couple of scenes, maybe we'll do that. And how do you feel about having the camera running for the whole thing? We could either have the camera running for the whole thing or the camera not on at all for this particular conversation. But the idea of do, you know, interacting with an actor on Zoom and then you say, okay, now we're gonna turn on the camera and you're gonna play the scene. Ah, you know, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's not good. So acknowledge it, say, this is crazy. We're in a crazy world. So let's just see if we can, you know, explore, have some fun, see if we learn anything together. Okay, so that's what, that's what I would suggest for now. And, uh, you know, certainly uh, meet, uh, interview. Um, uh, what else? I, I, I was going to show you something. What time is it? Oh, it's four o'clock. Yes, we're at the we're at the hour mark. So I just want to uh, note that we are at the hour mark. It's amazing how quickly time flies, right? When you're having fun. So, yeah. uh, Judith, if you wanted to show what you wanted to show, and then we could take a couple more questions. Well, if people want to leave now, you know, because mm -hmm. we said it was an hour. So if you want to leave now, that's completely understandable. Okay. So, well, I got these things out. Um, these are my dollhouse dolls. Let's see. Okay. These are, I, I, I think they're so useful. Again, this is not in the original book of directing actors, but this is something I've figured out since then, is um, you can, can you see anything? Can't really see much, can you? Anyway, we've got some, got some dolls, got some furniture, and, um, well, I had a whole little kitchen up there, but you can't see it. I had to bring it down here. Anyway, and then you can, uh, you can say the lines and make them move around. And this is really helpful for imagining uh, scenes. You know, before you do your, before you do your, um, uh, I always forget the word for that. You know, when you, uh, Sketch. Oh, this is really good. <laughs> blocking or, or no, no, it's the the the, the uh, overhead storyboards. 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 That's it. It's a very simple word. Before you do your storyboards, and before you do your blocking diagrams, before you do your shot list, to just sort of help you imagine it in three dimensions. You know, it's sort of more like a theater. Sort of putting it into more like a a theater kind of thing. So so the. Oh, well, gosh, I, ha I had it up on my, but you can't really see it. Anyway, so, and then you, they say the words and then they move around and then um, maybe you have a refrigerator over here. Anyhow, this is not going to work, but, um, but that, but, but you could try that. Get yourself some, some uh, dollhouse furniture and little dollhouse dolls or action figures or um let's see art supply dolls and and uh, um you know and, and and make them move around while you're uh you know so and and see if that see if that does anything for you you know and even if there's a scene that you've already storyboarded um see if you like start from scratch what would it be like if they're really people? Because if you do this, they're just dolls, of course, but, but it will actually look and feel more like what you're going to see when you get to rehearsal or the set, because it's, you know, people moving around in a little, little room or little park or whatever. So I don't know. It, it feels pretty lame as a way to get through lockdown, <laughs> you know, I don't know. It's really hard. What are people doing? What are you guys doing to kind of keep yourself alive during lockdown? Anybody? Personally, um, go ahead, Trevor. 
I was saying lots and lots of writing and uh, watching YouTube videos, just trying to stay into everything because it's all you can do when you're in the house, just kind of watching different directors, actors, just trying to stay a part of it. Yeah. I've been joining a lot of like writer groups, sorry. <laughs> just a lot of any group that I can join, like Zoom group to check in on each other has been like the best thing. Yeah. Oh, good, good. Jasmine, I think you were going to say something. I'm, I'm trying to do, to learn a skill that's like creatively adjacent. So I'm picking up like guitar and piano um, to keep me, to keep me going a little bit. Um, right. Doing stuff like this, obviously. Tyler, you had your hand up. Um, yeah, I was just wondering, Francisco, did you know those people that you're meeting up with on Zoom? Or is that, how are you finding these things? I've always wondered about that um online um on like you know I, I actually follow a lot of y'all online um and um one of somebody posted like hey um you know do you want to join a writer's group and then then, then we did thank you Sweet. <laughs> i was very That's thankful cool. for that it was really cool <laughs> thanks cool i'm finding it fun to do a lot of cooking with a podcast involved so like john august script notes is great and just to like listen to a bunch of those and experiment cooking and storytelling as well oh good i've actually been trying to develop to figure out a way to shoot a short film um one of my old ideas reformat it for like a zoom kind of like shooting it over zoom so uh -huh. that's a lot of time <laughs> that's a great idea and um, pre-producing like crazy. Uh, get all my high school friends that are other also filmmakers. I'll uh, say, hey, yo, I'll produce that for you. Or, like, I'll, I'll run up the schedule for you. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll arrange a shot list, all that. I got you. Um, back and forth, try to work with as many people as I can within this time. Yeah. I've been, um, I've been hosting writer circles. I, I normally do one a month in my apartment in Jersey City. And I'll invite anywhere between two and 12 uh, writers with any short material that they want to discuss. Um, and by short, I don't mean um, just only short films, but it could be features. But we tend to keep to a maximum of 12 to 15 pages so that everyone gets about an hour of first reading their piece and hearing it out loud. And then uh, anywhere between 20 and 30 minutes for comments and feedback, always constructive, of course. Um, and there's no prerequisites for that. So if anyone from this call wants to join, um, by all means, if, if Wesley wants to pass on my, my email, um, it's not closed off to, you know, people that I know it's open to anybody who wants to hear their piece or wants to share and needs some feedback. Uh, I'm a screenwriter first. Uh, so that's where I specialize and I like to give back in that way. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks. That's great. That's great. How many of you are, are uh, quarantining alone without, uh, without anybody else in the house? Yeah, yeah. But the, everybody else has somebody else in the house? Oh, well, yeah. that's <laughs> good for y'all. That's tough. I think that's tough. So are you guys, are you making sure you're Talk to somebody every day. <laughs> yeah, I find there's like buddies. I'll talk to the same people rotating every few days. That's nice. Good, good. It's very important. And you, it's, it's possible to get some fresh air. At least, at least open a window at least. I have a little bit of a yard I'm very grateful for. <laughs> good, good, good. That's good. That's good. That's good. So uh, did did, uh, did anybody else have any other questions? Uh, just because we're we're ten minutes over time, so I don't know if you guys want to uh, try and ask your questions uh, one after the other, and I can start off like a little cue here, uh, or if you guys just wanted to go for it and uh, start talking about the things you want to know a little more about. I have one question. I can make it really quick. Um, so my background is more in doing improvisational comedy and and just the play of that. But I was watching binge watching Easy the last couple of weeks, and um, that whole show is centered around uh, it's an anthology series, um, but it's all improvised, which I didn't realize when I was watching it. So it seems like uh, the director is doing outlines 
and then it's the same cast over the three seasons, but I was just curious if you had thoughts on doing something that was an episodic series where, what, what were your thoughts on how you support a cast who may not have an improv background to kind of lean into being open to working that way? Well, I recommend that you find people with an improv background. That too, yeah. <laughs> I do. I really do. You know, there's so many of them, you know, I mean, at least out here. I don't know. I don't know about the East Coast, but out here, man, everybody has taken the Groundlings course or the UCB. You know, UCB is just closed up. I know. It's really sad. It's, it's heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. Did I just they close in LA as well as New York? About it and I thought, well, they just, well, they've stopped classes, of course. Yeah. Everybody has. And I realized, no, they, they closed up shop. Yeah. That's what? terrible. The groundlings are still going on. So everybody here, every actor has just I thought it was interesting because with Easy there, it's a drama. I mean, dramedy, but also that it's um, that you're working with an extended bit of material in outline form. So you're just, I guess, you would just build it through a season and work with your individual cast members over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you know, but you know, if you wanted to get a group of people together and you wanted to learn um how to well it's it's a whole skill it is a skill to uh, I, I mean i i like oh, i can get people improvising who have never improvised before but i'm very extreme about telling them not to perform you know when i, when I was teaching well so where's alan is alan is alan gone Oh, well, anyway, so um, when I was teaching the acting for directors course, um, uh, I, I was, uh, you, you know, I, I would get people on the third day to, to do little improvised uh, scenes, but I was, I, I took like 15 minutes to explain the ground rules and the ground rules were absolutely uh, no rules, you know, no, um, no, uh, no acting no trying to perform, no trying to make it funny, no trying to make it dramatic, no trying to push the scene in any particular direction, just absolutely um, just responding to each other with no obligation. So my rules were no denial, no obligation. But I, I got good at explaining these rules, but it, you know, it always took me 15 or 20 minutes and it was always worth it to take that amount of time. So it's it's not that um, it's it's not that easy to get people to uh, not watch themselves if they're not used to it if they haven't had training in it. And, you, you know, the, the the at the center of improv training is uh, you know your partner. That it's that it's uh, you know so it's all that that's one of the great things about it. You know that that, it, that it's focused on the, the no denial means that you whatever your partner gives you. You know that they, they you know i mean people have a tendency if they've never improvised before if their partner says oh uh it's so cold today and then they'll have a tendency to say what are you talking about it's the middle of summer it's 100 degrees it's been 100 degrees for three weeks you know because they think it will be dramatic or something mm -hmm. but you know all you're just arguing about what planet you're on and it's not that interesting after all so um so, uh, you know, so no denial is the heart, the heart of, of uh, improv training. They, the, they call it the yes and. The, you know, the, the, so if your partner says, it's so cold today, and then you say yes, and it's just amazing because it's the middle of J July, you know, you, you, can still, you can still do that if you say yes and. If you, if you say yes and. And uh, you know, and, and and then you know, keep keep building. So so that's at the heart of improv. And people who who don't have experience with it, they think it's something else. They think the heart of improv is being clever. Well, highly recommend that show if anyone wants to explore oh, how. I, I didn't know. It. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. What's and the name of it again? Oh, easy. Okay. On Netflix. So, it, it, Wesley, did you have a question? No, I was trying to see if anybody else had any questions. I yes. do. Hi. Um, I have a question. Uh, so, uh, kind of 
trying to figure out on set when things aren't working and, and when you know when to regroup, when to, when to completely shift that, you know, your direction, um, you know, realizing that it's not working and then how to shift from that. Um, because yeah, I recently, I, you know, I had a, I was working on a scene and the um, actor was crying and even like, even though there's no crying in the script and I was trying to like, trying to push them away from crying and it felt like a constant thing on every scene, even scenes that weren't emotional. I was like, please stop. I can't tell you that to them, but I was trying to like, oh, please, uh, you know, you're trying to empower him. I was trying to use words that basically shed away from tears. Um, and, and, and that was the time where I was like, oh, as a director, I don't know what to do anymore. Um, so yeah. It sounds like a time to take him aside. I mean, you should tell her, oh, everything you say to an actor should be a private, I mean, you know, never, never yell at, call to them from behind the mm-hmm. monitor. But um, it sounds like you could take him aside and say, tell me some more about your choices. Because mm-hmm. uh, uh, I don't know, just I start there. You know, get, get, you know, like, like treat it like it's, like it's an artistic issue and not, you know, not something wrong with him, Mm -hmm. but like it's, uh, you know, it's, it has to do with choices that, that he's, he's made choices about this, you you know, tell me some more about your choices Uh, or, or particularly, and and then if he, if he says, what do you mean? You you could say, well, I, I, I'm, I'm wondering, uh, uh, oh, why he's so sad. I don't know, you could just say it like that. Mm. I'm wondering why he's so sad. Okay, thank you. No, yeah, I guess I worry to use words like that, like asking them questions about like the choices that they've made, because um, I feel like I'm like attacking their, 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 their approach. So I don't, so that's good that it, it is that. Um, well, you know, be sure that nobody can overhear. That that's important, but uh, I, I think you want to be direct. I mean, here's the thing. Here's, look at it this way: an actor, you know, they might be uh, might bother them to be asked to, to have their choices questioned. It might even make them angry. Might maybe make them feel hurt. Might even make them feel defensive. But as long as you're in privacy, that'll be okay. You, uh, you can take it, right? You're tough, you can take it. You, you have to be the one that can take it. Mm. And, um, uh, but which do you think the actor would rather have happen? That they get told something that's uncomfortable to be told or that they get cut out of the scene? Right. It's pretty simple, right? Okay. So, uh, so you, you know, you, you have to, uh, you know, mo- most of us are not, uh, uh, don't have a lot of experience telling tough truths to other people. In real life, we don't have a lot of experience with that. So get some. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. You know, I, I think lockdown's a perfect time for that, really. I, I mean, I just feel stripped down in so many ways. And, uh, you know, emotionally, you you know, I just feel like, why keep up the facade, you know? You know, if you're, you know, and and the other thing is you you have to realize you're, you you have to tell yourself, you know, you check, you know, where's my heart? Uh, Is my heart pure? Uh, Am I telling him this out of love because I know he can do better? Then yes, you can say it, whatever it is. Beautiful. Thank you. And... I saw Alina had a question. Yeah, uh, kind of jumping back to rehearsals, if that's okay. If we, for a second, assume we have basically the opposite problem. We don't have no rehearsal, but we have a lot of it. And you talk, um, in directing actors, you talk a lot about in rehearsal mirroring back to the actors what you liked, what they did um, to mirror it back. and yet you also talk about maybe just making a note and saving it for the shoot and i'm wondering so when do i make a note and when do i mirror it back directly so when is it better to save something for the actual shoot and when should i explore it more in rehearsal 
Wow, I'm gonna I'm gonna punt on that one. I don't know. I can't, I can't give you a you know an absolute thermometer there. Um, uh, that comes with experience. I mean, all I can tell you is I have made both those mistakes, telling them too much, and not telling them enough. I've made them myself, and uh, you know, here's the thing. Here's the thing about mistakes. You know, if, if you if you're not, if first of all you can ask them. Am I? You could say, am I? Be, am I talking too much? Here's a great question. Am I talking too much? Uh, um, you know, or or do you, or do you um, uh, or 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 do you want me to talk more? That, that that's that's helpful. Find that out. Um, and Fui, what was the other thing I was going to say? It was very important. <laughs> I can't remember. I was going to say something else. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, oh, just remember, you know, if you do make a mistake, it's not the same as a, a surgeon. You know, like, you, you know, if this, you, you know, uh, we're creative, we're creative, we're, we're, we're creating uh, imaginary circumstances and imaginary stories and imaginary people. If you make a mistake, you can change your mind. And uh, if you're a surgeon, when you make the cut, if it turns out you've made the cut the wrong place, that's a different kind of mistake than the, you know, the, you know, the, the, I, I think I, I think it's so helpful to to realize, you, you know, make choices, jump in, and then uh, then if it if if you feel like. Uh, you, you, you know, if you could get to where you could say, well, that didn't work. You know, now you don't want to do that with producers around. Okay. So you don't want to do that with producers or crew. Yeah. But if you're, it's just you and the actor and, and everybody's focused on the work, then it really becomes okay to say, well, that didn't work. Let's try something else. Let's move on. You know, the sort of no fault, no no analysis. You don't even have to analyze. You can just say, "Let's move on." And uh, but that's the value of having rehearsal without producers or crew around. So you know, they're kind of rough. You know, on, <laughs> on actors and directors. And uh, let's see, we've got Paolo next, and we're gonna we can do one more question after Paolo. Uh, it looks like it's it can be Miguel unless somebody else wants to go. And so yeah, Paolo, uh, you're up. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, so Judith, one thing I would love to ask you is what type of advice would you like to give to uh, young directors and even younger directors like myself? Oh, uh, um, well, uh, I still think you should go to college. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, are you going to go to, go to college? Uh, yeah, I'm aiming for uh, FSU Film School. Oh, great. Okay, good, good. And I think you should study other things besides film. I think, you know, you should take electives and you should, you know, study philosophy and poetry and science. I, 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 really, I, I really think that <laughs> science and math is, is really helpful for, um, for directors. That's my belief. You know uh, that uh, I don't know. Develop both sides of your brain. I, I, I kind of uh, one point I really got into left brain, right brain theory, and um, you know the um, and the idea that uh, uh, writers and actors are are very right right brain. Actually, some people said the right brain. I don't know. Anyway, right brain, you know, which is uh, imagistic. Uh, uh, Impulsive, non-analytical, and then um, and then directors are more left brain. That that's, but but you know I, everybody's a mixture of both, and um, so I don't know. I, I I think you know develop all parts of your brain. That's all. Develop all parts of your brain, uh, and uh, and really uh, science is so interesting. And um, 
I, I philosophy and all, all, all kinds of stuff. I, I, I really think it, and um, Shakespeare, here's what you could do under lockdown, read Shakespeare. What about finding a group that wants to read Shakespeare out loud together? Maybe I'll start one. I don't know. I, I think that uh, I think reading Shakespeare is. I, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what I figured out is that everything that I understand about script analysis really came from Shakespeare and Emily Dickinson because they're so hard to understand, so hard to understand, and so just reading it over and over until something came to me uh, really uh, and then and then I figure out one little phrase and then I don't know then something else in the uh, sentence or the character would start to make more sense and it would be like a, you know it's like a puzzle and you know you find more more parts of it and and um, and things uh, I don't know, everything that I write about imagery, about using imagery, subtext imagery, I learned from Emily Dickinson. But I'm figuring out her imagery because it's so hard to figure out. And, uh, and I, I just thought, this is, you know, this is so much. And then, and uh, uh, so I, I, yeah, that's another thing during lockdown. Read a lot of Shakespeare, read it out loud. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, we're, we're going to sneak this one in here, but we have uh, our last two things. So we're going to go with Jasmine first, because uh, she had a question or uh, uh, an ask of, uh, of Judith. And then we'll go with Miguel to wrap us all up for the day. Um, I was just wondering, I, I listened to an interview you did. And yeah, you like put your feet in the newspaper. And you mentioned not wanting to go into the older stuff, like from the 70s and before. And I, I just want to know what those movies are, because I'm, I'm down for that content. Oh, 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 when did I say that? The 70s, that's the best, uh, that's the best. Oh, okay, 70s, all right. You want, you want suggestions of movies to watch? Yes, please. Dog Day Afternoon, have you seen Dog Day Afternoon? Uh, Dog Day Afternoon has to be number one. Um, and then of course, the God, well, the Godfather movies are from the 70s, you know, there's, uh, Wait, what am I going to do? I'm not going to remember all the all of them. Here's uh, here's a couple that not everybody has seen. I, I've always been surprised at, you know, how how that people haven't seen uh, Dog Day Afternoon as many you know, but but uh, but as many as should. But um, Clute, who's a who's a who's a uh, Pakula fan? Anyway, uh, anything by Alan Pakula? Anything. You know, uh, all the president's men, Sophie's Choice, uh, Clute, um, you know, fantastic. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just talking about, I'm trying to come up with lesser known ones because, of course, that was the heyday of Coppola. And of course, Taxi Driver. I mean, I've, you can always rewatch Taxi Driver. <laughs> you know, that's so, uh, but anyway, those, those are ones that everybody knows. But, um, trying to uh they shoot horses don't they sydney pollock back when he was doing that dark dark stuff before tootsie when all he was doing was dark dark stuff jason you know what i'm talking about jeremiah johnson you know dark 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 so uh what else who else Jason, you must have some suggestions about 70s uh, filmmakers. Um, you know what is actually fantastic is um, there was a recent interview with Quentin Tarantino. It's a two hour long podcast where he lists every single movie he saw in the theater when he was 15 years old in 1979, because they used to publish these compendiums of every movie that came out. And it's kind of magical to hear that and to hear, you know, still these little gems that he takes from them. Um, I'll dig that up in a, in a second and I can post that in the chat box. Um, but also, I mean, while you were on the Coppola stuff, I was thinking of the conversation, which oh, is my favorite. Yeah, absolutely. 
French lieutenants, women, women, you know, I mean, there's a whole lot of stuff. I mean, the deer hunter, of course. The deer hunter. So have you, Jas Jasmine, have you seen the deer hunter? I've seen the first half of the deer hunter. I need to circle back. <laughs> also, it's, it's, it. hard. it's hard to watch. Definitely, very hard to watch. I think that might have been in the 1979 like release group. Um, I, I feel like I've heard something about the deer hunter recently um, where the, that the main character is the town okay. or something. It was like an interview with um, Chimino and he was talking about how it's about, it's about this like, you know, town where everyone is still speaking Russian and it's still got this like old school connection changing over time, yeah. um, which isn't the, the first read that a lot of people bring to that movie. And I thought that was just fascinating. Okay, last question. And Miguel, yes. Um, yeah, I just want to throw in, I love um, The Exorcist and The French Connection and yeah. uh, Lincoln Center ran uh, a, a very short film series on films from 1972. And I saw what is I thought was the most incredible gems, the films that I would have never seen in my life, um, which were The Deep and The Car. They're both semi sort of horror films. One's about a shark and, and gold at the bottom of this bay and the other one is about this car who's just out to run people over and it's amazing um but i'll uh so my question and and i'm trying to read the room here especially since uh, i think his name is uh paulo asked the question about schooling um so i did want to ask uh judith about um teaching directing in today's um mm -hmm. sort of how every every university almost has a film department if not a film academy in and of itself and I've been to three of them that range anywhere from a mom and pop one to uh, you know middle of the road and then one of the greatest cinema academies you can think of and what I find is that in all three there's there there's like in any any subject and in any place there's going to be um, a lack of something but what I was shocked to find was that a lot of these film schools um, seem to be lacking courses in directing the actor. And I'm wondering, um, w is there activism on your part um, with this book that I love that you go back to and have been going back to for, I think you said 25 years. Um, you know, is there something that we can do to become more involved and fill that void and change the way that universities are approaching, you know, offering, lessons or or diplomas or whatever you want whatever have you in directing and never once bringing an actor to to a classroom i think it's criminal but um i don't know if that was everyone's experience or perhaps just one of mine that happened to just always be a constant well you know you have to ask you, you have to lobby for it you know you have to say we want this um and uh I, I think uh, uh, you, you know it's 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 I think I think a lot of people are more comfortable around the machinery around the toys you know so you 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 have to say yes we want to go into the uncomfortable areas you know around around either the toys or around the discussion of great movies and uh, so I mean it's the students that are more comfortable as well as the teachers. And uh, so you have to say, we want to go into the uncomfortable areas. We want to fail in front of our peers and, you know, take those chances. Because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's trial and error and, it, you know, and finding a, a place to, it, you know, that it's, so, that it, so that it becomes about the work, not just about the product, but about the work. And uh, it, it's very, uh, uh, yeah, you, you, you have to keep asking, uh, you know, I don't know, write petitions or whatever, but, but uh, uh, I, I do hope that this 25th edition is, is going to be helpful because the, the, the chapter on rehearsal, I've, 
revamped quite a bit and actually said, you know, to make it more, you know, to have a section of it that would just be about, how, uh, uh, you know, a study guide for, uh, for a class, you know, that would include a bunch of stuff that you would never get to do on a professional set. But, you know, to say this is a, uh, but, but the, these are things that would be good to have practice with in, you know, in a two or three hour time frame. Uh, where you, and you know, with with actors who who uh, you know want want to play around. You know, I mean, actors can't do anything without other people, so they're 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 game for that kind of thing. You know, they're they're game for um, for working out. You know, as long as it's not punishing. <laughs> You know, as long as it's not a punishing experience, and and that means list. You know, uh, I, I had another client a couple of weeks ago. Well, we you know we'd been working together for a while, and um, this is before lockdown. He's in New York, and um, uh, and he was getting ready, and uh, he he hadn't really uh, directed before, and he was going to do a feature. And first, I tried to talk him out of doing it. I was trying to say, you know, I think what I really think you should do is make uh, short films for a year or two and then make your feature, but he didn't, he didn't cotton to that. But anyway, um, uh, so I said, well, then you've got to, you know, practice, you've got to meet actors, you've got to have practice rehearsals with them, you've got to. And, and finally, I said, I'm not going to work with you if you don't. And um, so, so he started doing it and then, you know, he was ready and he was going to the first one. I said, let me just give you one last thing. Cause he happened to be a guy who liked to talk a lot. And, you know, I had noticed it when he was, when he was talking to me and I said, you, you, I want you to practice talking less, really practice it. It will feel uncomfortable to you because you like to talk, but uh, practice, you, you know, use this 50% thing. Talk less than 50% of the time. Hear your voice less than 50% of the time. And, um, and then he came back. You know, he had a, you know, this practice, he found some actors and had a practice rehearsal. And then when we met the next time, I said, well, how'd it go? And he said, went great, went so great. And he said the, the, uh, the actors had said to him, you know, then, then I said, at the end, ask the actors for feedback. You know, how, how, they, how, they, you know, how they felt about it. And he said he was just shocked at how complimentary they were. And then they said specifically, they said, you know, it was so interesting how you didn't talk very much. That was, it was such a relief because most directors, they're just, they use rehearsal just to micromanage. So, you know, uh, I can't remember where we started out, what the question was when we started out, but it was something, yeah, I don't know. I think I went a little afield, but anyway, it's uh Well, that was, that was an amazing question. And I think it was, it was answered in a great way too. Um, I really just want to thank you guys all for coming. Uh, we've been here now an hour and 40 minutes and you guys all have been, have been amazing uh, <laughs> uh, for uh, joining in on this beta session. You know, we've definitely, we've all learned a lot, definitely leaving here with more than we uh, came in. So Judith, thank you so, so much. Uh, you thank know, you, from the bottom of our hearts. I know yeah, I can't trust when I say Thanks. that. Uh, thank you. I just want to thank, wow. <laughs> You're very welcome. It was a pleasure, really a pleasure. And I, I want to thank Wesley. It would not have happened without him. <laughs> sure. No big deal. Sure. No problem. Was, thanks, Was. No, you killed it, bro. An absolute, an absolute pleasure, guys. I hope we can do a lot more. If we can do one last thing before you guys get out of here. If you have your book close or a screenshot of your book uh, on your phone, if you could bring it up towards the camera, I want to get a screen cap so we can put it on Twitter. <laughs> Uh, yeah, go ahead and find it online. There it is. There we go. Find them online. Bring them up. Put up your phones. And uh, it. <laughs> there it is. you guys will get it as soon as it's up. <laughs> and you guys are the beta class. So 
do us a favor and go back on Twitter and let everybody know how much fun you had. Let everybody know how awesome the meetup was. And to all your friends that couldn't get in this time, uh, let them know that there's going to be more and they can always reach out uh, to be put on to the next ones. Thank you guys so, so much. Thank, Thank you, you all. You were wonderful. You were wonderful.